Sweet. And we're streaming? Yay! Welcome to the Con. Um, are my slides up there? Wow, because my screen looks funny. Must just be the hangover. Um, so what, what's this about? Um, every year since I think the first MooCon, uh, we run a, uh, this own the con thing, talk, whatever, uh, where we try to present the information of the behind the scenes of ShmooCon, and there's a variety of purposes for this. Um, one, there are rough edges when we run this event, um, and we want you to see how we're trying to address said rough edges, what we do you know, to try to make this as good an event as possible, to build some trust with the community so that people continue to want to come back to ShmooCon. Uh, but also, there's lots of people who want to run local events. They want to do, you know, uh, they want to run a conference or they want to run some sort of get together. And there's a lot of questions about you know, what are the legal issues, how do you get volunteers to work together, um, you know, how do you order swag, all this kind of stuff. And so, what we try to do is get all this information captured and on, you know, stream it and get it on video and whatever so that in the future when other people are trying to run their own events, they can look at the mistakes that we've made and hopefully not make the same mistakes uh, um, that we did. So um, with that, we may plow through certain topics just so that they get caught for posterity on camera. So I apologize if I start cutting off questions or anything like that. And there will be some on-the-fly engineering, apparently, of whatever is about to occur. Left your notes. All right. Well, that's not the worst thing that could happen. I can't actually see my slides. It's really exciting for me. Um, so we uh, formed ShmooCon LLC a number of years ago. We decided not to go the 501c3 route. Um, nonprofits can be a lot of work to set up, and it can be a lot of work to maintain. You have to have meetings and things like that. The overhead for an LLC is you have to pay the state, and that's it. Uh, it's really not that complicated. Um, yeah, it's, it's about the most simplest form of, of, it's not really a corporation in some states, but it works for our purposes. So we are not a nonprofit. We don't purport to be a nonprofit, um, but it's not because we're trying to make money, just that we're trying not to have more work upon ourselves than necessary. Um, and one of the, re you know, it, technically, we don't have to disclose any financial information because we're a regular corporation, but we tell you because we want to, and we figure that kind of makes up for not being a nonprofit because we open our books to you so you can see what we did. Um, organizational structure. Um, so the Schmoo Group predated ShmooCon, although I think that may be lost in the annals of history at this point. There aren't a lot of people that are aware of that predated the con by a goodly long time. Um, but we already knew each other as a group, and we were a very geographically disparate group of people. So we were very used to communicating and organizing via email. So uh, when it came time to organize the con, there weren't a lot of phone calls or hanging out in IRC channels or anything. It's just email. Um, and over the years, people have gotten pretty good at knowing what their roles are and just kind of start the engine, you pull the cord, and people start doing their things, and we form more mailing lists as we need, and we're off and running. Oh, you did? List for and a lot more. Oh, there were a lot more phone calls this year. I lied. We used we fancy technology, you know, Klondike Five, whatever. Um, so, the one thing that's interesting, we run our own mail server. We have for years and years and years and years as the Schmoo Group. Um, and there's a lot of on-the-fly mail list administration that goes on as we add and remove people. I can't imagine having to do it with some of the free stuff that's out there. Um, it's actually one of the biggest pains in the ass that we do is run our own mail server and almost also one of the greatest things ever because we can set up aliases and bring mailman lists online and, and whatnot. So um, it, once you get a mail server running, it's quite nice to have your own, but it's a kind of a pain in the ass to get to that stage. But thankfully, uh, we have some good mail guys on staff, if you will. Um, Conference dates and venue. So this was a new space, like last year was a new space. We kind of like stirring it up. Um, so we're in the same hotel as we were in last year, but we were in obviously this giant ballroom thingy. Um, we didn't have any really crazy congestion points. There were certainly some choke points in the vendor area, I think. Um, but that was more kind of how we laid out vendor tables than a, the issue we had last year, which is there were structural beams six feet apart that everyone tried to move through every hour, and that did not work out as um, anyone would have planned. Um, there were a lot more rooms for other activities. Um, you know, all the contest rooms had tons of space compared to the last year's, which was really nice to be able to um, spread out into that space. Um, I mean, did people, I mean, it wasn't a big cattle drive going between talks or anything like that. Did anyone feel <laughs> LOE or anything was good? Thumbs up. Did you miss that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't go knocking DEF CON for that. Um, boo, sorry. Yeah, look at me be hypocritical, jackass. Um, 
so the, it, I, I think it was a little squirrely. I mean, there was the entrances on this side with the stairs, and I was asking the security folks out there periodically how many people are using the stairs, and it's like, yeah, no, and not a lot. You know, <clears throat> most people were scooting down this hall and coming in, so it was really kind of a backwards setup, I think, the way that we had the room set, but the stage is over there, and so that's where they set it. So um, the dates tend to float. I mean, DEF CON is, you know, that last weekend in July every freaking year. Um, for us, yeah, they are a lot bigger. Um, we have some adventures in planning, uh, both from a
the talks and they almost caught up to everything else. Uh, which is, from my perspective, I enjoy seeing that. Well, it's you also know. maybe the first year that our track names actually made sense. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> where Build It actually was about building things to protect systems as opposed to, well, it's just a bucket to put the extra bracket stuff in that didn't fit. Um, so that looks like it could be used defensively. <laughs> Scoot it over there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was actually a really nice uh, uh, breakout this year and pretty even distribution, but I think part of that's attributed to the fact of the sheer number of talks that we got, um, and we could low-level pretty reasonably between the, tr uh, the tracks. Um, this is uh, submitted talks, um, and you'll see actually the defensive talks that were submitted uh, were actually a, um, you know, still a relatively small percentage compared to, um, uh, compared to the rest, the miscellaneous bucket. I mean, there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff that ends up in this room in the Bring It On room um, that comes in. So, I don't know if um, you can read that. You can ask Frank what it says. Wow. Um, no, I can't. The miscellaneous category had more reverse engineering, malware, and smartphone exploit. And Android development. So I, I'm not sure why exploitation didn't end up in do what? Not handwriting. Handwriting. How to handwrite was not a submission. Um, I find I can't do that anymore since I type so much. Anytime I have to write more than one sentence, I fail at it. So um, clearly, Frank has failed at it as well. No, that's my handwriting. Oh, that was yours. Oh. <laughs> that's cool. I need to ride home. Um, if anybody. All right. Uh, number of talk submissions, um, a nice uh, upward trend, um, and actually... Why did we go down? I don't know, but that number for this year, we don't have 2012 in here. Well, no, Frank. It's okay. This, there, there's a larger bar at the end. It's just, it's, it's hidden. Yeah, yeah, the bar at the end is twice as high as the other. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Between 2008, uh, when we had less than 100, and, and 2007, we've more than doubled in the last four years in the talks that we have to, to review. And
Um, so we still do a multi-round ticket sales process. Um, it used to be a, a three rounds with three, um, yeah, three different pay scales or pay scales, um, price levels that you pay what you thought the con was worth. So kind of a Burning Man model. Um, unfortunately, it became so successful that it was just pay whatever the hell you can get your hands on. Um, so we flattened the price out to one, uh, one price, but we still have three uh, sales. We've decoupled getting a reservation to buy a ticket from the purchasing process for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them is in the past when the system would get buried um, and then people were trying to buy tickets at the same time other people are still trying to reserve and the server would thrash around. We would end up with credit card transactions in really hokey states where the transaction would have gone through but the person never got the response from the web server and then they would submit again and submit again and suddenly somebody's paid for their ticket a bunch of times and then we have to go in and refund you know a thousand dollars worth of tickets and the banks don't like it when you're refunding massive amounts of charges and you have to do all these chargebacks and things like that so uh, we've decoupled that process. It also allows us to um, to a manual audit of what went down. Because it turns out people want to come to the con, and shockingly, people may write bots and things like that in an effort to try to get more tickets. Um, and so we do actually look through the logs before we release uh, things for payment for people to be able to come and pay to see if there's been shenanigans. And if there are shenanigans, we address it um, right yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Well, the shenanigans have to reach a certain threshold because there's always some shenanigans, right? Um, but we do. I mean, and, and people have these questions. You know, that it's it's our. You know, what, well, there must have been bots. Well, clearly, there's a hell of a lot of people hitting this. There are some bots, but we have countermeasures against them, and we look for it. And if there's a huge block, or we see some trail of something, we're gonna we're gonna address it. So this isn't something where we're just blind to it. This is something and we're very active. Even after you have your registration code, we're busy little bees looking through this, making sure that everything's right before we start accepting payment. Because once we start accepting payment, for us, that's go time. We don't want to have to then refund a bunch of money. Um, no, I just want to explain the terminology, or you, maybe you can better explain it, but the terminology between held and then wait list and actual reservation. Yeah, so when um, you get to the site and you, you the first thing you do is you, you um, uh, hold your you get two tickets initially, or one, depending on what's available, and then that is held. Held for you, and then um, then you move it to a reserve? Well, then, yes, and then you move those tickets to a reserve status, but in the meantime, what is also happening is once all the tickets are held, we have a certain spots for the wait list. Right. And you correct me if I'm wrong, because... I'm saying this all, you know. Yeah. So, there, was, there was a great amount of help uh, in the cart over the years, and it's a number of cooks in the kitchen that made it better. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that one doesn't have horns. Um, so what's interesting is um, <clears throat> we started the year on the, the Django-based uh, system that we had, um, and we used that for rounds one and two, and that was behind the cluster, the big moose cluster. We had a bunch of PC, or PCs. This year we had frickin', you know, dual-socketed quad-core Xeons um, in the cluster. They were, they, it was a slight upgrade from the TF2 boxes that I had to cut the feet off to get fit in a rack last year. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, um, but then after the second round, um, you know, we, the second round was again, you know, kind of thrashing around and the load balancer, we had the 503 error thing going on and um, had to like figure out how much the load balancer could let through and how much the database could handle, how much the web service could handle. And we kind of just said, all right, let's try something different. Um, and we rewrote it as a web server module running like in the address space of the web server. Um, and didn't have a lot of bells and whistles, wasn't framework based, it was very decoupled from the rest of the system, but it was goddamn fast. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It was, it was interesting because in the past, like, we will have windows open on all the servers and we're looking at tops and everything and watching the, the load progress up and we could see that, that 12 o'clock spike when people are hitting it and we see all the inbound connections and we're ramping up to thousands of connections a second. Um, on the, on the actual registration web server with that new module, uh, once we hit go, the web server process didn't even hit the top of top. Like, that's how efficient this thing was. And like, I'm like, are we live? They're like, uh, yeah, we're sold out. I was like, <laughs> that thing's cool. <laughs> so add all those numbers up. I mean, that is essentially, it took, in each of these, in each of these sessions, you see 30 seconds, two minutes, 2.2, 2.4. In each of these sessions, it took about anywhere from like, what did we say, Dave, a second to two seconds to fill the wait list after that. So once that wait list is full, that is when we consider ourselves sold out. Nobody after that point is going to get a ticket. Add that up. What does it equal? I didn't do it, so somebody tell it's me. It's like two minutes and 35 seconds. 
yeah, something like that. So. Okay. I realize that those numbers are not going to add up to the numbers you're going to see here in a little bit, and we'll explain why, but. She'll explain why. I'm not going to. What? 1,400. 1,400 tickets. tickets? Oh, right, yeah, and then there's that. Um, so anyway, I think we have a pretty good foundation for next year uh, as far as getting past the uh, F5, 503 excitement that we've had in years past and the moose cluster failing. Um, so we'll, yeah, what? Go ahead. I okay. Just... We're, we're going to have new problems, I'm sure. Um, but I think that this boogeyman that's been on our back for a long time, I think we could, hopefully can put to rest um, and we'll see, see what fun we can have next year. Um, and I don't know if they're all in this room, but there are essentially, sorry, there are essentially three people who um, have put a lot of their blood, sweat, and tears into this, um, let's call it a project. Um, and it's uh, Dave and Kaz and uh, Ben Laurie, who I don't think, he's probably sleeping. Um, anyway, so we are, we are. Yay, just, guys. We love them. Um, so ticket sales, we sold, um, uh, a little bit larger. It was a little bit, Jesus, my math or English, damn it, it's wrong subject, um, is bad this year. Um, part of the reason we grew is, is the bonus round. Uh, we did the, you know, kind of Christmas bonus to test the cart. Um, and so that added a hundred and changed it to the mix. Um, and, uh, we were a little bit bigger space this year. So we threw a little bit extra in, uh, we had 1,809 out of 1,850 people check in. As of this morning. Um, as of this morning. Yeah, two people came in already today and checked in. <laughs> cool. They really wanted the bag. Um, <laughs> so that's 97%, which um, is pretty good. But even last year, in the snow, we had like 95% pickup rate, which was amazing given the weather conditions. So um, turns, that last year? Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. We have really, really, I mean, we, in years past, we would actually have almost 10% attrition. Um, and then... Two years ago, two we had snow last year, too. Last year was we had the snow early and then the snow after. We didn't have the snow during. Two years ago, the snow was during because I was in snowshoes and the Marriott was telling me to get off the top of the... Anyway. Um, <laughs> it was not snowing in the hotel last year. No, no, it was not snowing in this. Yeah, that's true. That was, that was exciting. Although this year it did rain sheetrock. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like weaponized snow. <laughs> the guy goes out to his truck like, man, this, this, this is really stuck on my truck and flatten the fucker. Um, so 50 speakers, give or take, 65-ish uh, staff, 15 press. Press showed up a lot more this year. Um, we had a lot of press interest this year. Uh, we don't really advertise the con. We don't, um, uh, you know, it's, we feel it's important that the message from the speakers and the audience and stuff gets out, but we've never really um, been active in including the press um, and for right or wrong. Uh, we just... Yeah, I was in the post this morning, and, and, and I've seen yeah, some other uh, write-up. Yeah, and it's big press, you know, the Journal, Forbes, uh, Washington Post, that kind of thing, which is, is new for us. Well, we've had some, some big press before, but not, I think, to the, the scale we had this year. And a lot of them were like, I've never heard of you guys, but you seem popular. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, we liked it that way, but now you're here, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> Watch out next year's ticket Yeah, who, who knows what will happen next year. Um, we, again, West Point uh, got, they brought 40 cadets down. Um, for those that have never been uh, to the uh, U.S. Military Academy up there, it's, um, it's kind of remote. Uh, <laughs> it's not, not a lot near West Point. There's and, a yeah, there's a McDonald's directly off post, and after that, it kinda, it's, there's a river and um, mountains. Um, and so for some of these uh, cadets, it's kind of a culture shock beyond just going to the military academy, but also to be in the middle of nowhere. So for them to come off post and get to dress in civilian clothes and come down here is, they really like that. Um, but they also like the opportunity to come down here and learn. They have a fantastic program up there and we were happy to have them here back for like, like the seventh year or some nonsense. They've been here. Been here since the beginning. They may have been here, yeah, since, since yeah. Pucon 1. So um, that's fantastic and we like being able to provide that to, to the, the Army. Um, and they have spoken, yeah, every, almost every year for the last three or four years. So go Army. Um, yay, here's a fun topic, this gets people excited. Um, eBay, third party ticket sales, you know, the aftermarket, whatever you want to call it. Um, we don't control what happens to the tickets by design. We don't want to get involved, we don't want to control you, you know, if your buddy wants to come see a talk, you can hand him your ticket, you know, you want, I can't make it, you hand some of your barcode. We don't arbitrate that, we don't want to get involved. It keeps our overhead low. Um, because honestly, when it comes to ticket mangling and going back and forth, that pretty much falls to her, um, and she has to administer all that. And so when 
something happens, it takes a long time to unwind ticket issues and when we're trying to do other things. And so in general, it's just easier. The ticket's anonymous. You do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, every year, tickets are sold on eBay, and people complain about it. But how many was it this year? For 40 listed on eBay. 40 listed on eBay. Eight did not sell. Eight did not sell. So approximately 3% of the ticket sales ended up on eBay. Okay, it's not a massive number. It's a little larger than uh, than last year. I think last year we were around two uh, two percent of the tickets ended up on eBay. Um, and some of, I mean, a lot of them appeared to be totally legit. Like, hey, I can't go. There were stories. There was um, at least one identified fraudulent ticket this year. Oh yeah, and we did have one bad, like actual made-up ticket. So that was a new one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we've, we're big enough and important enough that people are going to sell fake things. We're like the Super Bowl. So I guess next year we'll have you download the hologram and put it on your barcode. Um, <laughs>
on, at, there's no free time. Like if there's a spare moment in the day, it's going to be filled up with Shmoocon stuff. That's what we do. You know, I have another job, I do it, and then I work on this. Hadi works on this and takes care of our kids. We wake up at 6 a.m., we do this, we go to bed at midnight, wash, rinse, repeat seven days a week for a month, right? It's a lot of work. And so there's this bit of selfishness in here that if we got much bigger, it would pretty much nuke from Thanksgiving on, and I at least like my turkey, so screw that. <laughs> no more Shmoo Ball. Um, Smooth ball's been dead for two years. Came back virtually this year with the moose. Uh, the moose is clearly a work in progress. Uh, we were, I think one of the biggest feedbacks we've heard about is there needs to be more instantaneous feedback. The speaker said something you don't like, the moose should respond instantly. It shouldn't be like you, the speaker said something you didn't like 10 minutes ago and then the moose goes off and it was like, well, that's just annoying. Uh, <laughs> I still think it's funny. I think I'm the only guy, like every time I get this, I'm like, I'm giggling and like no one else is giggling. I'm like, oh God. I guess I'm a troll at heart. I'm not really sure. Um, Shake, the shake your phone. Thing. So, um, which I envision will be like we 1.0 problems, you know. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Except instead of going through the TV, it's going to go into the head of the person in front of you. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the um, uh, we'll see. We'll play with it. I mean, but the goal again is to foster audience interaction, um, and and this was kind of a grand experiment to try something you know totally different than we've tried before. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, from that perspective, it was interesting. And, and like all experiments, I mean, there's successful parts and unsuccessful parts. We well, learned a lot. And we, we dreamed this up one night at, like, what, December 27th? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty late in the game. And um, honestly, the, uh, uh, the 757 crew, uh, are any of them in here? One, one. No, they're all manning their moose. Oh, they're all manning. They probably are manning the moose. These guys put it together. There's one guy, but he has many personas. Um, <laughs> And they put this together over the last month. They worked really hard, including buying things from Harbor Freight. Um, one of the problems they had while the air horns didn't work is because they're relays. They're 40 amp relays on those air compressors that blow the horns. And they bought 40 amp relays and they blew them out instantly. Um, and after they were, when they were out looking for the other relays at like Radio Shack, um, they took the relays that they bought and opened them up. And inside the 40 amp relay was a circuit board with a 5 amp relay soldered onto it. Um, <laughs> Technically, not a 40 amp relay for the, the EEs in the room. Um, so anyway, there's some, some challenges. Some challenges that had to be overcome. Supply chain, you know, corruption notwithstanding. Um, so it's a work in progress, but I have a lot of faith. Oh, and I got to thank the Mobile Disco crew for griefing it right off the bat. Um, they even had an iPhone app to grief it. Um, they could just, they, they collected 100. Yeah, it's, it's actually, you know, you know that there's going to be shenanigans. And so Jakku, the redheaded guy that looks like Sean White with a gut. Um, <laughs> Boy, I'm so glad he's not here, but he's going to hear that, and I'm going to get it later. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they collected barcodes from people, because they had a barcode to throw a schmoo ball. They stood outside registration and collected 120 barcodes. So after they were redeemed. After they were redeemed. So he was dedicated to the cause. I tried to lift them out of his pocket, but he had actually collected so many, they were jammed in, and I'm not very good at lifting, and so he noticed. And, um, and then they wrote an iPhone app, and then you just say, select the number of schmoo balls you want to throw and hit, and it gives you the status, and the, and the, and the, burr, and the horn goes off. So I was like, wow, that's great. Thank you for doing that. Uh, but they're actually going to be working with the 757 guys next year to make a more refined app that's less likely to, or less able to be griefed and has more interactivity with the audience. So we'll see how, how that works out. All right, the meat of this thing. Uh, we're going to tell you about the dollars. Uh, sponsorship this year was over $100,000 came in. Ticket sales is about $221,000, so in total. I did that math in my head. She did do that math in her head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most applause there's been all day for adding a one. <laughs> Watch me divide later. <laughs> <laughs> I've had too much caffeine. <laughs> Um, here's what we spent. I'm not going to go read this because you're capable of reading. Um, but we spent about $210,000. Uh, we are insured for like the third year in a row. Um, um, yay, yay. That's peace of mind, I tell you what. Um, these slides will be posted online so you, people don't need to go crazy transcribing. Again, this just gives you an idea of scale. Um, the hotel space, um, you know, a lot of it gets covered by the room commitments that we make. Uh, but we, one of the biggest problems we have uh, with the way that we run the conferences, since we don't ask you who you are when you show up, um, if you register outside the block, 
um, we don't really have a clear way of tracking you. And so one of the trade-offs we make is, hey, please let us know if you've registered and you're outside our block because you found cheaper rooms somehow so that we can get... Uh, um, well, and let's talk about that. Well, so one thing, we don't need to know who you are. We just need to know your reservation number. So if you're worried about maintaining anonymity, that's cool. You can just give us a reservation number. We can't track honestly, that back. I don't Give a shit. Yeah, we don't, we, don't, we don't care. Information doesn't go anywhere. Um, but the problem is if, we, if there's a miss, like we make a room commitment when we sign the contract. We say we're going to, you know, a thousand room nights or whatever. Um, and if we don't make that, if we're, if we're short by a certain number, then we'll owe the, uh, owe the difference as if the rooms were filled. So at 160 bucks a night, you multiply that by the number of rooms that you're short, and that's what the check we would have to write to the hotel. Now, in reality, it's...
Um, that may change next year. We may go to something a little bit more aggressive. Um, but uh, if you walk up with your barcode and it scans, we give you a bag, you get the hell out and you go. Um, so it's um, amazingly smooth. The line moves, I mean, line moved quickly. I, people, yeah, I mean, we can get people in and out of there pretty fast, uh, which is nice. And it's something that from day one. So do my friends who are lining up on Friday morning at 8 a.m.? <laughs> we have plenty of bags. You can have more. Um, eight seconds of pop. Eight seconds of pop? For, for how many? The first 500. First 500 we did, one every eight seconds. So, um, you know, that's pretty. And another reason why we want to keep it anonymous, we don't want to take time and look at your goddamn driver's license. Let's <laughs> just scan it and get the hell out, you know. Uh, so eight seconds of pop. Um, the registration team works really hard. And, again, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to make that moment happen so that there's just a, you know, a nonstop flow of bags and the barcodes are being scanned and the database is updated. I mean, it's pretty... Um, it's a pretty amazing system, so uh, thanks for putting that together. Uh, video streaming. You're going to have to start that as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to start the motor. Um, it, it's been going well, streaming people. So, um, and, and the Internet folks, I think um, I've totally ignored the Internet, so I'm just going to assume it went well because of the Internet, and I can just assume things about it. Um, we, we upgraded our gear, which is probably the most important thing to note this year. Um, last year, we were using these HP something or other Core 2 Dealey Bobbers, um, and we had no way of monitoring the stream. This year, we deprecated those to be monitoring workstations so we could interact with them on IRC and make sure the stream was going okay. And we've got... <laughs> Anybody need a male child age nine? <laughs> no, but apparently he picks locks. He got second place in the uh, black bag contest with, the, with another Bob. So, yeah. Um, anyway, the new laptops are i i7s uh, with a lot of memory, and they they worked uh, re they worked well. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, so Adobe, we use uh, Flash Media Encoder, Flash Media Live Encoder, which is a very interesting piece of software. Um, <laughs> and the A to D converters uh, that are USB-based are very interesting pieces of hardware. Um, and I, I swear to God, like, I don't, this stuff, all it's, it's not fun. Um, I spent hours um, over the last couple weeks troubleshooting this so that it would work when we got here. But um, you can get it to work, and anyone that wants to stream, you can email us, and we can give you the secret sauce so you can at least learn from our mistakes on that. Um, but we had a lot of people watching online. I put that, we put that up there without actually asking. We had a lot of people watching online. We assumed. Great. So, um, yeah, cool. Um, so you can stay home next year and watch it online. Um, it would cut down cost. Um, as long as you buy a ticket, though. You got to buy a ticket and then stay home. Um, security, so we provide our own security staff. They don't dress differently. They all wear the same staff uh, shirts, which um, we like because we want people to feel like they can come up to anybody and ask questions or at least 